your body works uh, integrated. You have a, an, an internet connection between the joints and, and the force needs to be dissipated by the whole body. So uh, we started looking into that in my PhD studies in 2012, 2011, something like that. And uh, we were set, assessing the hip muscles, the knee muscles, and the ankle muscles, as well as the landing mechanics in people with and without patellar tendinopathy. And what we found was that the people with patellar tendinopathy had an abnormal landing mechanics. They would land with a, a more stiff mechanics. They, they didn't use their joints well to dissipate the load. They had less movement in relation to the controls. They moved their trunk less. They moved their knee less. So we, we started wondering what would happen if we change that. And the hip plays a major role in that aspect because these people with pain, they had 27% less hip extensor at strength in relation to the controls. So as soon as we saw that, we thought, oh, that's, that's, there, there's no way that that's not relevant because even if that wasn't the cause of the problem, if they have weakness in their hips, that may be one of the reasons why their pain is persistent because they are having to use the knee more to dissipate the load. They may have to, be, to use their ankles more to dissipate the load. So we started looking into strengthening the hips, changing the landing mechanics, thinking about distributing better the loads between the different joints so that we wouldn't have overload in one specific joint. But uh, after the study that, that we published this study in 2016 in the Physical Therapy and Sport Journal, uh, and uh, we actually presented these results at the University of Oxford in 2014. We, we won an award for that, uh, for that uh, study that we did. That's something I'm very proud of. And uh, we started to, do, uh, to thinking about interventions that would also address these factors to actually give the patients uh, uh, a greater chance of having long-term results. After we did that study, there was a study from a Chinese group that also found that the people with patellar tendinopathy have around 20% less uh, strength in the hip abductors and in the hip external rotators in relation to the healthy controls. And they also found a significant correlation between decreased strength in the hip muscles and worse function, worse symptom severity. So uh, if you take those results into consideration, you have that if people have less strength in the hip muscles, they are going to have a poor outcome in their in their function. Their their uh, symptoms are, is gonna are gonna be worse. So, looking into the hips is one link of the chain. It's important. I I just want people to be careful of not thinking it's the most important thing because people tend to be super excited when they find out find out a new factor and they completely disregard the rest that they know. So the hips are important, the ankle is important, but don't forget to do a progressive loading for the for the, the tendon itself. But don't forget the kinetic chain because uh, the hip in, in this specific case is a very important link of the chain too.